Hello everyone, my name is Salma. I'm a doctoral student at the Institute of Structural Engineering at ETH Zurich. I'm also collaborating with Polyhedral Structures Lab at University of Pennsylvania. I'm going to talk about an extension to the algebraic polyhedral graphic aesthetics formulation for the analysis of tetrahedral truss systems. The polyhedral graphic aesthetics has shown potentials for form finding and design of spatial structures. Also, a handful of computational techniques can generate the dual diagram given the primal or provide algorithms for manipulations of form and force diagrams. However, existing computational implementations either only work with inputs or primal diagrams that are closed cells or self-stressed networks, or they are a form-finding process where the designer starts with the global force diagram representing the external equilibrium then modifies the force diagram and finds a form at the final stage. So the main objective is to develop a computational implementation for inputting a truss that is not a self-stressed or a closed form and analyze this truss by calculating its force diagram using algebraic equations. Before talking about the reciprocity in polyhedral graphic aesthetics, let's quickly remind how the reciprocity in 2D graphic statics works. In 2D graphic statics, the faces A to D of the form diagram are reciprocal to the vertices A to D of the force diagram. These faces or subspace assignments are defined based on the divided outer space between the loads and supports and the inner space between the truss members. Vice versa, each faces one to three of the force diagram are reciprocal to the vertices 1 to 3 of the form diagram. And these faces or closed polygons in the force diagram represent external and nodal equilibriums of the truss. Also, each edge in the form is reciprocal to an edge in the force. And the magnitude of the force in the truss member is proportional to the length of its reciprocal edge in the force diagram. Now let's move on to reciprocity in 3D. To do the subspace assignment in 3D, we have to first specify faces. So the subspace assignment in 3D is defined using cells A to E as opposed to faces in 2D. Cells A to E have reciprocal vertices A to E in the force diagram. Vice versa, closed cells or polyhedrons 1 to 4 in the force diagram are reciprocal to vertices 1 to 4 in the form and they represent their nodal equilibriums. The next reciprocity is between the edges and the faces of the dual diagrams. For example, edge 1, 2 is parallel to the normal of its reciprocal face, C, B, D in the force. Also, the magnitude of the force in this member is proportional to the area of the face C, B, D in the force diagram. Now let's see how we can calculate the force diagram given the form. So in the first step of the computation, we extract the data structure for the input truss, which includes the information of its edges, vertices, faces, and cells. For that, we use the PolyFrame plugin for Rhino. So we need to make sure that all the faces are planar. Each two faces share only one edge and each two cells share only one face. In the second step, we construct a global force polyhedron, which is equivalent to assure the external equilibrium and find the direction and magnitude of the reaction forces. We first make the face reciprocal to the applied load by traversing the cells A, B, C around the load edge and drawing the normal vectors of the faces between these cells. The direction of the applied load dictates the cycle of the face and therefore the correct direction of these normals by using the right-hand rule. Since this phase is a closed polygon, the sum of its edge vectors should be the zero vector. This can be written by using an algebraic equation where matrix AL describes the topology of the phase and vector QL contains the edge lengths for the load phase. Therefore, the edge lengths of the load phase can then be calculated. Now that the load phase is constructed, the topology of the reaction phases can be similarly obtained by traversing the spaces around each support edge. The difference here is that the reaction directions are unknown. For example, the correct cycle of the phase AEC 
is obtained by flipping the direction of its sharing edge AC with the load phase and adjusting the other edge vectors accordingly. The edge lengths of the reaction phases can then be calculated using another set of algebraic equations by keeping all four polygons closed and imposing the condition of keeping the previously calculated edge lengths of the load phase. So the result is a flat force polyhedron. Now the topology of other phases of the force diagram and their edge lengths can be calculated similarly, resulting in a complete force diagram. The type of forces, meaning tension or compression, can also be defined. Assume cell 1 of force diagram, which is reciprocal to node 1 in the form. For example, the normal vector of phase CBD is towards node 1, which means that its reciprocal truss member is in compression. Another thing that can be achieved is showing the force visualization by geometrical addition of form and scaled force diagram using Minkowski sum. Now let's look at more examples. Here is an example with four supports. We want to make sure that we do the triangulation of the form to assure that the internal faces are planar. For example, here by adding the diagonal member. As you can see, with increasing the number of loads and supports, there will be more options for triangulation of the form. Although, in this symmetric example, the diagonals carry no forces. The computation can be performed on examples with several loads and supports. As can be seen, the force visualization can also be used as constant stress fields while using stratum time models for the design in a continuum such as reinforced concrete. To conclude, we have shown that for tetrahedral shaped trusses, we can calculate edge lengths of the force diagram through algebraic equations and analyze the truss. This was without requiring to have a closed shaped truss. As an application in my research, I'm using the presented method for the development of 3D stratum time models and stress fields for reinforced concrete design. The next steps involve an extension of the formulation to include other types of possible geometries, also include algebraic equations for modifications of load phases. Thanks for your attention.